Villages in Minecraft are one of my absolute favorite things inside of the game. The villagers, maybe not so much, but when it comes to building inside this game, I love to create villages, atmospheres, small towns, cities, whatever it is, you name it, and I like to build a, some sort of a settlement around it. It is by far one of my favorite things to do inside of this game. We can start with just the basic villager settlements that we have inside of the games, the one that spawn in here by default and really turn them into something pretty freaking awesome like what we're looking at right here with this very, very cool custom village that I did inside of my back then Minecraft 1.14 survival world series. This is all vanilla survival everything in here. If you'd like to see it in action, I will leave a link to the playlist down in the description below where we turned an entire Minecraft default village into this awesome build in here. But today's video, what I would like to talk about is how do we make a village like this? How do we make something like this, some, build something cool inside of Minecraft, and we're gonna be talking about ways to lay out villages, ways to make your styles more unique, and everything along those lines, just to add more interest inside of your Minecraft world, now, first and foremost, when getting started with your village project, a pretty dang important thing to go with is to pick a style that you want to build with. If you don't quite know what to do, well, thankfully, the game has given us a lot of amazing options to go with to get yourself started. This village right here looks a little similar to the one that we were just looking back at, my village. I very much themed my custom village off of what we get to see with the new Minecraft 1. new as of Minecraft 1.14, updated villages where they have the new houses and everything the oak plains village house incorporates pretty much all these styles but there's a lot of great ones that you can use from the spruce wood ones in the taiga forest there's the savannas and then there's also the desert villages those are some great ones to get yourself started pretty much what i recommend doing look at a biome that you're interested in. look at a biome that you think is cool where do you want to build and then pick a style based off of that one now that we've got the style figured out for what we would like to do in our village here, in this case, the style that we're going to be looking into mostly is this lovely one right here in front of me that we've been wandering around a bit. A great first thing to do before you start bringing the villagers into the place and bringing these lovely guys, these lovely little idiots that manage to get themselves killed at any point where they possibly can, we probably want to get ourselves fully equipped to be able to handle them. A great way to push yourself forward and figure out new things to build is just to look at the things that you need to do inside of Minecraft or the things that you probably want to do inside of your base to be able to set yourself up for success. What I would personally recommend is a starter house. Some form of starter house. This is where you can really experiment with the style that you're going to be using. And then also on top of that, you probably want to get some sort of a storage room. This used to be covered wall to wall with shulkers. And now it's just leftover of whatever loot, including the dark oak boats apparently down here that I really, really needed to use. But it's a great way to get yourself moving throughout your Minecraft world and get yourself building a few things. You can do your starter house, expand to build another building for your storage room. And then also you can make a map room. One thing that I've personally found when working inside of villages like these is having some sort of a map room so that I can constantly update and say, oh my gosh, look at all the stuff I've done in the last few hours, or the last few weeks or whatever, and just update those maps is a great way to get like that instant gratification of, wow, I'm doing something in here. Now that we've talked about this style and we've kind of got our first few buildings in here, it's probably time that we set up a, a layout a layout for our village, the way that we can structure the roads and the way that we can do things and make it a little bit more interesting. A good point of reference, I will say, is looking at the default villages that we have inside of this game. For example, this is one of our very, very old one. As you can see, it's still the old style. We are in my super flat world current currently. And if you look at where the path block roads are, you can see they have a lot of straight lines, but they also aren't just working on like a plus shape or a T shape. You can see a lot of different ways that they kind of connect in here together and just these different styles going in alongside of all of those. Now we can start off by making that just generic plus shape that we might see in a lot of villages and having kind of buildings surrounding a center town square. You have roads going off in each of the cardinal directions. It can work out pretty great, but if you want to make your village a little bit more interesting and a lot better, one thing I love to play with is sight lines. So simply all we'd have to do is like take this road over here, obviously probably a larger scale than just one block, but you start to curve these, add some extra depth and shape into this one. So instead of just being able to see all the way down this way, 
you might have a bit of a building right here and then some buildings right over here, buildings over here, which allows you to kind of structure the player so they're forced to kind of explore more to see all the way to the gate or whatever grand structure might be over there. You could have a castle up in the sky right there on top of a cliff or a hill or something, but in order to get to it, they have to go all the way along the street. Coming back over into the survival world now, showing a bit of an example here of how that can work is we come inside the front gate of my city here and you can see that this pathway isn't just a straight line. It instantly veers off going up, which elevation is a great thing you can use, but we're not gonna be focusing on that in today's video. Elevation is a great way that you can kind of expand it and force people to move up and it really kind of gives a realistic appeal to everything. Where Minecraft's pretty flat, but real life elevation would be changing a lot inside of cities and villages and whatnot. But coming into here back into what I was really talking about is you can see as you're kind of coming throughout this area, the road keeps curving at an angle. It's a consistent angle and this one's kind of almost just a straight diagonal line here until it curves at that point. But you can see that this point right here where that structure is sticking out, you can still see that giant, giant manor house in the background behind that one. So it kind of leads the player or yourself or whoever might be wandering around your village to want to go and look and see what the heck is at the end of that point. They see the cool towers and everything on top of it and they're like, I have to go find that. You can see that down all of these different roadways I have. You can see little glimpses of what's at the end of it, but you can never see all the way down them. Now, if you're like me and you get builder's block all the freaking time to where you're just like, I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna make a box and this box is gonna be where I live. I don't know what to do inside of it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what to make this box even to mean. A great way to get started with this, look at the villager professions inside of Minecraft. If you wanna build a custom village, a great way to get yourself started is to go off of the villager professions inside of the game. So once you've started to tackle all of those different ones, and once you've started to really look at all of those different professions that they have, then you can come back into the game itself and be like, all right, what can I add on top of this to make my build a little bit more unique? That's where the wonderful one rule place of Google comes in handy for me. And I have found a few websites that I can share links to in the description below that are just full of like medieval professions or things that you can include inside of a medieval city that are just super helpful. I've shared them with people in my Discord and they absolutely love them, but just a few ideas off the top of the head. Probably the staple that you all know by now, include a windmill. And maybe you have your storage room, maybe include an animal barn. You can include an inn. Your windmill is probably gonna be processing all of your grain and stuff like that. So maybe instead of just having the windmill, you also have a grain silo with it. Another one that you can add in with our lovely librarian villagers, they kind of look like they could fit this role, is you could add in a school. And also on top of that, there'd be a lot of kids there and maybe some of the kids don't quite have homes and you can add more story into it and add like a great war going on and you can add an orphanage. There's just ways that you can build off of each other one after the other and just keep getting new ideas more and more as you're going and there's so much cool stuff that you can just build in this game. Now it is extremely easy for village projects to get out of hand and grow rapidly and for yourselves to burn out. And well, what I would recommend for that is setting some sort of a boundary around your village so that you know where you're stopping. And keeping the buildings close together is a great way to get yourself started with doing that. So like we have all these little plans for structures here on the grounds, it's kind of keeping us within the limits of these rivers. We have one river right over there above my head, and we have another river right over here on this side. Another example of a boundary that we can use is we have these lovely fields out on this side. It doesn't always have to be a wall or it doesn't always have to be something. You can use natural Minecraft terrain or things inside of the game to be that bounding box of where we don't send the buildings out to or where we don't keep expanding to further. It's a great way to keep yourself limited on the inside and kind of forcing yourself to work in specific bounds. For me at least, kind of helps me come up with more creative solutions that probably wouldn't have worked otherwise. Now, if you really want your Minecraft builds to come to life, it's all about the things outside of just the buildings that you make. You can make an awesome castle, you can make an awesome building, you can make an awesome wall, whatever it might be. Those can all look absolutely great, but your build can still feel empty if you don't get the small details right. For example, we have a small little well and a workstation back here. You can include this as like a small park area. You can include custom trees. You can include ponds. And we have a little riverway stretching through our city right here. Just something to break it up and add more interest into it. We can even go bigger and have more of a park area or a large fountain 
of sorts, just different ways that you can break things up between anything, really. You can do custom parks, you can do different ways of having the roads situating. For example, another little thing we can check on super fast right up here, we have a small little market area with a giant tree in the center of it. This is very much a foot market that you would just walk around in. Then we come up over here and we have a very interesting diversion to this one or a difference to this one of this is a very much a large central market area where people would be coming from all over, bringing in their carts and all of their goods. And we have all these different workstations where the people selling goods in here, you can see that they're able to do things. I know it's very limiting inside of Minecraft, since it's hard to fill the place with villagers and rely on villagers to actually, you know, not get themselves trapped and killed or die to zombies or whatever it might be. We have to use our imagination to create a believable workstation for somebody to sit at. Now, I know this video is titled How to Build a Village in Minecraft, or at least something along those lines at this point in time. I don't know, the video's not live. It's live now, but it's not while I'm recording right now. But anyways... I also know that we barely placed any blocks inside of this entire video, but my friends, that is very much on purpose. These videos that I do are designed to help you pursue your own creative imagination and become a better Minecraft builder yourselves. I could give you all the tools and just do a direct block for block of here's an entire village build, but in the end, all you're gonna be able to do is copy the village build that I did. I know there's a lot of people out there that like to do that sort of thing and like to be able to do that, but if you truly want to become a better builder in Minecraft and grow as a builder in Minecraft, these types of concepts and these types of things that get you thinking, you gotta practice, you gotta work on it, you gotta learn how to grow as a builder, you gotta fail probably about 50 times before you get a success on there, unless you're just absolutely amazing. Any absolutely amazing people out there wanna build some cool stuff with me? I don't know, let me know. But, my friends, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so very much for watching. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you found this video is useful. These villagers are jumping and they stop jump. Okay, there's no, there's no joy here. There's no joy here anymore. But please be sure to hit, click that like button if you have not already. The villagers will jump if you click the like button. That was happening for all the people who didn't. Just kidding. That's enough of me asking for that one. Subscribe if you have not already, my friends. And I will catch you on the flip side. Ah, 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 ah,